Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday, June 29th. Thanks for joining us as we head towards the end of June and getting closer to July. That temperatures actually look a little bit better. They we'll are. take it. Yeah, outside with live cam. Uh, already up to 81 degrees, though. Let's get an update with Justin Horn on any potential big problems so heat advisory wise so well, you guys are right about the the positive aspect of this we're starting to see temperatures trend in the right direction plus you just saw that we got some clouds out there that'll help us a little bit to just keep temperatures down take the edge off a little bit i want to show you the heat advisories and excessive heat warnings you remember across the state they were blanketed across texas over the last week or so now notice they're moving east so places like mississippi louisiana those are places that will really see the heat today as our heat high shifts east and away from us, we're still going to see hot temperatures, but not into the advisory levels. And really, uh, these are some of the best numbers we've seen in a while, which is hard to imagine that 100 is, is good, but again, just a lot better than uh, what we've been dealing with. Heat index should be around 100, 102 at its peak. And then tonight, we'll see those temperatures drift back down into the low 90s by 8 p.m. and 9 p.m. What about rain chances? There are some in the forecast. Sunday, we have a small chance. Monday and Tuesday, some isolated showers and storms. Not a big deal. It's not going to be widespread rain, not going to be drop busting rain, but any little bit helps at this point. And as we look at the weather headlines, uh, we've got to talk about the tropics. There's a lot going on in the Pacific. We'll talk about Adrian, which is uh, rapidly strengthening. And then we've got a new tropical depression. What about the drought? Drought monitor is in. We're going to take a look at a very interesting stat for South Central Texas. How many days we've been in drought? And also we'll talk about smoke. A lot of uh, a lot of the country dealing with some smoke that is uh, causing some air quality issues. More on that in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Looking out at the Transguy camera out at I-35 in Von Army. It looks like this is I-35 at Fisher Road where there's an accident and you can see that things are slow moving. This is a south southbound lane. Yes, Mark? yes, yes. ma'am. And it's right now the textile website is showing uh, up to three lanes blocked right now. We have a number of disabled vehicles around town too right now, but this is our only accident. Again, this is 35 southbound in the Fisher Road area. It's listed on Transguide as 35 at Vaughn Army. That's right, and it happened about 15 minutes ago, so hopefully things will get cleared pretty soon. All right, and as far, do you guys want to pop up another camera? And then I ask, and that happens. 281 in Encino Rio, that's up on the north side, just outside Loop 1604. Traffic is looking fantastic right now. And again, let me see where some of these disabled vehicles are. We have one at I-10 and Fresno right now, and that's about it. Uh, the only other incident, let me redo a quick refresh for the TxDOT website. Meanwhile, 1604 at Marbuck Road looking good. Things are moving this morning. Most of these cameras on Transguide are looking pretty good. Earlier you saw a shot at 281 at St. Mary's where things are looking well as well. Okay, in your morning headlines, we could just see how fast a police officer reacted to that mall shooting up in Allen near Dallas. And a guy just cleaning up a lab accidentally destroyed decades worth of important research. Another planet found, but not aliens yet. And Twiggy the skiing squirrel and a summer tour. David Sears is here. All right, a skiing squirrel. When's the last time you saw a skiing squirrel? It's been a while. I yeah. knew that was like a, a kicker everywhere many, many, many years <laughs> yeah. ago. Yeah, Twiggy's still around. Yeah. Aww. We'll show her to you in just a second, but first we're going to start with this. Body cam footage from a police officer in Allen, Texas, in the mall parking lot. Just having a casual conversation with a woman and her two kids about being safe in the car. Then all of a sudden, as they were wrapping up the conversation, shots fired. The woman grabs her kids. Police then grab a rifle from his car and then takes off towards the danger, chases the shooter, and then takes that suspect out. And here is how it sounded. Hey, make sure y'all be good, okay? And make sure you wear your seatbelts when mommy's driving, okay? You understand? Okay? Okay? All right. All right, you be good. always the seatbelt. Wow. 145, I think we got shots fired at the outlet mall. They're moving further away from me. 145, I believe we got a mass shooter. I got Maxine on the ground. Drop it! Drop it! I'm passing injured. 
You don't see it there, but once again, that officer was able to take down the shooter who killed eight. The Allen police chief released the video so people could see how fast just a conversation with the family turned into a life and death situation for that officer. The video was shown to a grand jury and they ruled that the shooting by the officer was justified. Uh oh, one flip of a switch in 20 years of very important research gone. Happened at the Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute in upstate New York when a janitor shut off the electricity to a freezer and now there's a lawsuit. The incident happened back in 2020. There were cell cultures and specimens being used in what the school considered groundbreaking research. The cells and specimens were kept in a freezer. The freezer was supposed to be around a minus 112 degrees, but for some reason the temperature rose. That set off the alarm and that made some very annoying sounds. The school says there was a written note that they were having an emergency, but the janitor turned off the electricity anyway. The school believes the janitor has special needs and they are not suing him. They are suing the company that hired him, claiming he was not properly trained and supervised. They are suing for a million dollars. All right, there could be another planet float around space. Astronomers tell us that a Jupiter like Expo, Expo planet that is 520 light years away it may have just survived the destruction of its own host star. The discovery was made back in, they've named the hot gas planet Hala after the highest mountain in South Korea in honor of its discovery by Korean astronomers back in 2015. Now, a new study in the journal Nature, astronomers suggest that Hala may have survived the destruction of its host star, so it looks like the Explo, expo, exo planet. I can't even say what it is. It's just this astronomy thing. It burned through its supply of hydrogen. It's now burning helium at its core. So astronomers believe it once expanded into a giant red star and survived. Oh, how about this one? The system could have had two suns, not little guys, but suns like burning heat suns. They merged or collided. Something like that happened. All right, so you need a little sucker for the day. Here it is. When's the last time you saw the water skiing squirrel? Twiggy just made a <laughs> short stop in Rochester, Minnesota. Showed off the skiing skills. This is how big time she's gotten. Her boat even has a sponsor now. Twiggy was rescued by Chuck and Luann Best back in 1978. Chuck has since passed away, but Luann keeps traveling with Twiggy and now they have a new message, boating safety. If you notice, look real close around Twiggy's neck is a life vest. So Twiggy is now the spokes animal for the National Safe Boating Council's Wear It campaign. By the way, Luann has trained eight squirrels Aww. to water ski, but I think she's retiring, has retired, so her son's gonna take over the business. But yeah, this there is goes not our first rodeo when it comes to water skiing squirrels. No. I knew there's a, there's a fraternity of them. It goes mm -hmm. way back. <laughs> but I like the fact the squirrel's got a message now. Yeah. Wear your life vest, a little yeah. life vest around the squirrel. Right. Safety first, yes. And we're Always. truly impressed if we see a water skiing squirrel that will slalom. Right? That's, that's what we're hoping. Got to raise the bar. <laughs> Some right. David, good to have you back on the nine. <laughs> See you. 906, 81 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at nine. The five things you can do to make sure bed bugs don't follow you home while you travel. Good morning. It feels like we're at a robotics party. Check it out. All these students excited. They're part of the robotics summer camp here at Somerset ISD and they just finished their final projects. The different skills students have learned this summer. Next. And we're back at just about 910. A summer camp at Somerset ISD is combining fun and teamwork with kids designing and programming robots. Tiffany Wetzes joins us from Beretta Veterans Elementary School with the opportunities the camp is providing and what skills are taking students to the next level in robotics. Good morning. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Remember I told you just a moments ago that this was a party? This is why, take a listen. Okay, I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> so much fun, just check it out. These students have been working on these projects. Their robots are on a mission today, and this is such a creative and innovative program. This morning, we have Tabitha with the district. Good morning, and tell us a little bit more about what students have been learning at this summer camp. 
Good morning, yes. Um, so students, they're learning all about our robotics. We do a first robotics competition. So they're learning all about teamwork. They're learning about how to code robots all the way from incoming third graders to eighth graders. Um, they're also really working on an innovative project. This year it's all about how do we include technology into the arts and how do we assist with our community with the arts as far as theater, drama, uh, all sorts of things. So if you see right here, these students, they're working on basic coding skills such as um, using their motors, using rotations, um, finding a different sorts of attachments, right? So, and behind all of this is really our Python coding that leads to those career jobs in the technological field. And right here we have Adan joining us. Adan, tell me about this summer camp. Have you been having a lot of fun? Yes, it's been very fun. Tell me about your project. Um, do you want to know about the robot or the yeah, innovation? Yeah, uh, I'll start with the robot. Well, this is the um, this is the Spike Prime robot. It uses a brain, and we use it for Bluetooth to connect to the. To, oh my God! <laughs> Wait, you can't see that right now. This is a uh, secret, and. <laughs> oh. So what he uh, did here is, um, as far as he, Adon's an incoming eighth grader, he has a prototype of a 3D uh, printer that will work uh, to innovate skyscrapers. And I, when I asked Adon, okay, so there are some 3D printers out there that do tiny homes. What makes yours different? And he goes, Miss Slaughter, I'm going to use some flame <laughs> retardant materials. I'm going to use materials that have shock absorbers, <clears throat> all of those things to make it different. And Adon, now that we have it going on, <laughs> can you show us how it works? Um, the programming, it, like this part is what makes it, like to, this would make it go forward and this would make it churn. <laughs> and this part kind of is still a work in progress, it really doesn't work too much. But this is the program that we have right now. It churns. Wow, how amazing! Are you excited to continue learning about robotics this year? Yes. And now you're going to 8th grade, so that's a big deal! Yes. <laughs> Alright, well thank you for joining us, we'll send it back to you. All right, Tiffany, thank you very much. Uh, we need to go into ABC News for a special report on the Supreme Court. In their decision saying they're going to set new limits on the use of race uh, when it pertains to a particular student must be part of their individual story and not simply uh, their identity. I want to bring in Terry Moran, who has covered the Supreme Court for years for us. Uh, Terry, this is a blow for Harvard and for UNC trying to defend their programs. Uh, again, the Supreme Court striking down their programs, but appearing to limit moving forward, saying race uh, can be a factor, but it has to be part of an individual student's biography, personal story, their narrative. That's it exactly, David. Uh, it's not just Harvard and the University of North Carolina that use the justification of diversity in the campus life and in the student body uh, as a way of reaching out and finding students that could contribute to that. Uh, in that way, Chief Justice John Roberts writing for the court and striking down Harvard's and University of North Carolina's admissions policies said that they used race uh, in an unavoid, in a negative manner, involved racial stereotyping and they lacked meaningful endpoints. When would they know that the balance had been achieved? And Roberts saying rather sternly, we have never permitted admissions programs to work in that way and we will not do so today. Instead, as you point out, the Chief Justice uh, saying it must be tied to that student's, that individual's experience. He says uh, at the end of, of his of his opinion, he says that if a student has overcome obstacles and can express that in, say, an essay or in a record of achievement, uh, that that student's courage and determination has overcome obstacles from racial discrimination, that student can, in fact, be considered in a slightly different way. It's you can't balance the student body, you can't reach for diversity, it's the student's story experience, not the student's identity, that can be considered under this rule. It really does knock down pretty much all of the admissions policies that consider race right now on the basis of diversity and changes the game really for students trying to get into colleges and universities. Yes, yeah, so a big picture question here, Terry, for you. It's not just Harvard and UNC, which is particular, these cases involve their particular programs, but this is sweeping in nature, will affect colleges across this country in how they look at, a, at an individual's uh, personal story in deciding whether or not they're admitted. 
Hundreds of colleges across the country and universities, state and private, have, since the 1970s, tried to achieve diversity on campus by looking at the racial uh, or ethnic backgrounds of students and essentially, without using quotas, uh, tried to balance the student body and achieve diversity for educational purposes on the theory that a diverse student body, you get different points of view, you get uh, a better quality of argument and discussion in classrooms. That programs, those programs are now ended by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court requires an individual consideration of every single applicant. And if in that applicant's story, there is a story uh, or experience of overcoming discrimination on the basis of race or religion or ethnicity, and that student expresses that either in essay or interview or through their accomplishments, the schools and universities will be able to take into account, but no more, according to the Supreme Court today, of this effort to achieve diversity overall by looking at uh, the identity, not the story or experiences, but the identity of a student alone. All right, stick with us here, Terry. I want to bring in Devin Dwyer, who also covers the court for us. And, and Devin, this is sweeping in nature given the 40 years of legal precedent that allowed colleges and universities to use affirmative action in trying to make their student body more diverse. It sure is, David. I mean, this is a sea change in American law and American society. It's a big victory for critics of affirmative action who have said that program is unfair for years, violates the spirit of the Constitution. But a big setback, as Terry was saying, for universities which have relied on this program to diversify their campuses. Justice Sonia Sotomayor, who herself has described the role that affirmative action played in her career, dissenting today sharply with the three liberal justices. She wrote, this rolls back decades of precedent and momentous progress. She said it now strips out almost all uses of race in college admissions. This will force colleges now headed into the fall college application season to rethink their strategies for diversity on campus, and that will affect every high school student this fall, David. Devin Dwyer with us as well. I want to bring in our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. Uh, uh, Mary, I know the White House is tracking this as well. Any statement? David, I'm told the White House right now is still digging through this decision. We know it is quite lengthy. They are trying to digest this, absorb the impacts of all of this. I do think it is probably likely that we will hear from the president at some point on this today, given the focus that this administration has put on the importance of equality. They have put this issue at the forefront of literally everything they do here. In fact, on the president's very first day in office, one of the first executive orders he signed was on advancing racial equality. This, of course, is a case that the White House had urged the the court not to take up the Harvard case. They had argued there was no sound reason to take this up in the first place. And of course, David, all of this is coming as we have to consider the broader political environment right now. We have seen Republican lawmakers, governors, even several of the Republican presidential candidates have been targeting diversity, equity and inclusion programs, especially in higher education. And this White House, in talking to officials before that this decision was made, have often said that affirmative action is an issue that they hope will drive voters to the ballot box will drive them to get out next November because they feel that, you know, certainly there's only so much the president can do. This is an issue that voters have to be a deciding factor on. It's really interesting, Mary. Thank you. Mary brings up uh, the voters and whether or not this will now drive people uh, to the polls. And, and the polling is interesting. Uh, aside from uh, what they'll decide on Election Day, the polling on this issue uh, has some somewhat nuanced. Uh, most Americans say they strongly support promotion of racial diversity on college campuses, universities, across the country, but strong majorities also oppose the use of race as a factor in admissions decisions. John Carl, somewhat complicated there, strongly support promotion of racial diversity, but not using it as the deciding factor. All right, you've been watching ABC special report coverage. To boil things down in one sentence for you, again, the U.S. Supreme Court has just ruled against affirmative action in college admissions, barring universities from considering an applicant's race. We'll have much more coming up in our later newscasts. That's right. We'll have the latest also online at KSAT.com. For now, let's go to break. Hey, real quick, I want to mention something. Yesterday, uh, I missed this, and I want to mention it today. Uh, our frequent director on this newscast, his name is Jamie. Yesterday was her 17th work oh, anniversary yeah. at KSAT 12. Happy anniversary, Jamie. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. That's right. I saw on social media you sporting your KSAT hat. Yeah, she won a KSAT yeah. hat. So. Congrats. Fantastic. Yes, congratulations to Jamie. Yes. Uh, I'm about to throw out a, uh, a big number here. It's a stat that kind of blew my mind when I was going through the numbers this morning. Drop Monitor came out, so I wondered how many days 
has South Central Texas been in drought consecutively? It's in big red toasty numbers. And this is what I came up with. 557 consecutive days that at least some part of our area has been in drought. And the last time we were completely drought free here, early December 2021. Wrap your mind around that. Uh, it has been a long time and not only that when you look at the state as a whole it really is right here in the hill country where we've been hit the hardest with drought we still have that exceptional drought stretching from kerrville to comfort over to canyon lake these are areas that desperately need some rain and really even here in san antonio we're still within a severe drought at least part of the county is and so uh, yeah it's it's still a bad situation there is some rain in the forecast not a lot but some as we look at rain chances down the line, we start to bring in some chances Sunday, but more so Monday and Tuesday. Right now, just a 20% chance. There's nothing that's going to give us widespread rain. It's going to be afternoon pop up stuff, hit or miss type activity. But even a little bit is is good. We'll take whatever we can get. 82 right now. Dew point is at 72. South Southeasterly winds at 10. Heat index is at 87. So uh, we are looking at a heat index right now, and I think we'll see that. Uh, especially early afternoon. Now, as we get into the late afternoon, dew points come down a little bit and the air temperature is not going to be that much different from the heat index. We do have some clouds this morning, too. So this uh, this helps as well uh, to keep temperatures down, at least temporarily. We'll have some of these morning clouds around for next couple of hours before they go away. 78 in Kerrville, 82 in New Braunfels, 85 Gonzales, 84 down there in Catula in low 80s here in San Antonio right now with partly to mostly cloudy skies. Temperatures by noontime, 90. Then we start to add in the heat index. Could go as high as 102. It's the early afternoon, 101, 102 is probably where, probably where we peak out as uh, with uh, the heat index. Uh, 100, the high temperature today at 5 p.m. and then down into the uh, 90s, low 90s by 9 p.m. and 87 by 10 p.m. There's our big heat high. It is shifting east and away from us. So the bigger numbers really today are uh, across parts of Louisiana and Mississippi. 103 in Shreveport today. It'll be 101 in Jackson. And they're going to be dealing with a lot of humidity too. We still got triple digits. It's still hot. Don't get me wrong. But it's just not the kind of heat we were looking at when that heat high was over top of us. And as we go to the tropics very quickly, I do want to mention this. We've got a little disturbance here in the Atlantic. No big deal. I don't think this is a problem, but we do have a developing system here. This is Adrian Hurricane Adrian winds are at 85 miles per hour gusting to 105. Now that moves away, doesn't affect land, but we've got another little tropical depression back here that likely strengthens into a hurricane as well. This is interesting because it works a little bit further north. It's possible that some of this moisture, some at least a little bit could get pulled up into Texas that can maybe help our rain chances a little bit. Not uh, not a huge uh, effect on our forecast, but just interesting nonetheless. And as we look down the line here, high pressure again moves away. We get some moisture back in here by Monday and Tuesday. 20% chance of rain both days, isolated stuff. And you see that here in the forecast. Uh, and those temperatures drop a little bit. 96 on Monday, 95 on Tuesday. It's been a while since we've had mid 90s in the forecast. So a better looking seven day forecast going forward. It looks good, especially on the 4th of July. Agreed. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. 927, about 82 degrees. We'll be right back. Hi, welcome back. It's 930. And here's today's Night at Night. Peak travel for the 4th of July weekend begins today, but not without headaches. So far this week, there has been more than 20,000 delays and cancellations. Flight operations nationwide reeling from days of severe weather and staffing shortages. Nearly 3 million people are expected to pass through airports tomorrow. More than 120 million people are under dangerous air quality alerts today. Smoke traveling from the Canadian wildfires is forcing people to stay indoors. As of last night, IQ Air says Chicago and Detroit have the worst air conditions worldwide. The Supreme Court expected to make a decision on President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan. The court will decide if the $400 billion plan is constitutional. The plan would forgive up to $20,000 in debt. If the court rules against it, there is a growing movement calling for a union of defiant borrowers who will stop making payments. 
The U.S. Coast Guard says presumed human remains have been recovered from the wreck of the Titan submersible. U.S. medical professionals will conduct a formal analysis of the remains as they sift through the debris collected from the ocean floor. The crew of five people on board are all believed to have been killed by an implosion. President Joe Biden announcing his vision for the growing economy, calling it Bidenomics. It stems from post-pandemic recovery and highlights a strong job market and falling inflation. However, a CNN poll shows that 66% of Americans disapprove of the president's handling of the economy. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas announcing a new leader for ICE. Patrick Leschleitner will now serve as the acting director. Leschleitner previously led Homeland Security investigations. ICE has not had a Senate-confirmed director since the Obama administration. Madonna is postponing her world tour after spending several days in intensive care. According to the star's manager, Madonna developed a serious bacterial infection last Saturday. She is improving and is expected to make a full recovery. The tour was initially scheduled to kick off on July 15th in Vancouver, Canada. Bed Bath & Beyond will live on. Overstock.com has finalized its $21 million purchase of the intellectual property of the bankrupt retail chain, including its website and domain names. Overstock plans to relaunch the online store within the next few weeks. You may want to stock up on Forever Stamps. The price for first-class stamps is jumping on July 9th from 63 cents to 66. Postcards will cost 51 cents to mail, and the post office blames inflation for the need to boost prices. And that's today's 9 at 9. Well, one of the main runways at Charlotte Douglas International Airport in North Carolina has reopened after a Delta flight's emergency landing forced it to be closed for at least 12 hours. The Atlanta-based carrier says this is a rare occurrence and the flight crews trained extensively to safely manage situations like this one. John Lawrence reports. Delta Flight 1092 left Atlanta Wednesday morning and arrived in Charlotte roughly 90 minutes later but the landing was anything but normal. Casual evacuation. The 96 passengers on board heard the words, people don't want to hear while on a plane. Come this way, leave everything, jump and slide. We. According to a statement from Delta, the plane's nose gear didn't go down, forcing an emergency landing. There was some smoke in the cabin, so that was a little concerning, uh, but the flight attendants did well. Uh, the pilot came on with his instructions that we would be exiting, and so we all exited safely. No injuries were reported, but some passengers were understandably shaken. Palms are sweating. I grab my phone, trying to text my wife, tell her I love her. Just a really scary situation. This is just another headache for the overall airline industry, which hasn't been soaring well over the past few days. We had hit with some pretty tough weather. It's affected a lot of flights. Uh, I reached my hotel room about 2.30 in the morning last night after my flight got canceled and the next one got delayed. A lot of Americans are going through the same thing. And AAA forecasts nearly 4.2 million people will be traveling by air for the July 4th holiday. I'm John Lawrence reporting. By the way, AAA says 50.7 million Americans will travel at least 50 miles or more from home this upcoming holiday weekend, which would set a July 4th record. And taking a look right now at FlySanAntonio.com, we are not seeing any cancellations and most flights appear to be on time, but there have been a few delays, so it's always best to check your flight status before heading to the airport. Outside with live cameras, someone who has flown quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Airports are packed, planes are packed, and it'll be like that for weeks to come as we head into the heart of the summer travel season. Justin Horn, good morning to you, sir. Yeah, we can only hope the weather cooperates a little bit better. I know that's part of the problem, and we've had a lot of severe weather around the country, but th things are getting better. It's a little less active today, and certainly not active here in South Texas. It's very, very quiet, other than we've got some morning clouds that are trying to drift through. Uh, we'll continue to see some cloud cover here over the next couple of hours before these clouds go away. But you can see that, uh, yeah, we've got some cloud streets setting up there, and it's 82 right now in San Antonio, 70s in the Hill Country, 77, Rock Springs, 78 right now in Del Rio, and the low 80s for the most part here around Bear County. Heat index, a different story. We've still got some pretty thick humidity, at least at the moment. So that pushes temperatures to the uh, near 90 for the feels like number down there at Stinson and Pleasanton. Gonzalez already has a heat index of 95. 
Uh, we'll see heat indices there well over 100. The case at 12 hour forecast look for 93 at 1 o'clock. We'll be up around 100 this afternoon. Heat index probably around 100, 102. Uh, so even a little bit better than yesterday and then by tonight back down into the 80s better temperatures ahead uh, we'll look at that plus the smoke that's going on across the rest of the country more on that in just a few minutes thank you justin looking at the roads with trans guide earlier we were showing you an accident here on this camera this is i-35 von army and it was actually at fisher road but it looks like it has cleared so traffic is moving in both directions and as the summer travel season kicks into high gear, industry experts are warning travelers to keep an eye out for bed bugs. So how do you spot and prevent bed bugs and keep them from coming home with you? Patrick Cornell has five tips to tell you about. Keep unwanted guests from ruining your summer vacay. As a potentially record number of Americans travel this summer, one expert warns that a very unwelcome pest is multiplying this season. We're definitely seeing bed bugs spread again. Uh, most experts will tell you they expect numbers to get back to where they were pre-COVID eventually. Bed bugs are not known to spread infectious diseases to humans, but the bites can cause severe skin reactions that itch. Entomologist Jeffrey White, an owner of White Mantis Consultants, has these tips to spot a major infestation. One, inspect the room. Check mattress seams, headboard, and the box spring for tiny brownish red stains or live bugs. No matter how, you know, expensive a hotel may be, you can potentially encounter bed bugs. We've seen bed bugs in five-star hotels that can cost more than $1,000 a night type stuff. Two, keep your luggage elevated. Put it on a desk or bathroom counter to minimize the chances of bugs crawling into your belongings. Anytime you can keep any personal belongings away from the bed, uh, that's always a good step. Three, use plastic bags to store your dirty clothes and avoid bugs from hitching a ride home. Four, once you get home, isolate your luggage and inspect it. And five, wash clothes in hot water and dry them on high heat. It's all about what you do when you return home. For Consumer Watch, I'm Patrick Cornell. Well, there's something fun to think about. <laughs> no, not at all. Oh boy, 938, 83 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And coming up, the percentage of minorities less likely to get CPR help when they're struggling with heat-related illnesses. As we head to break, here's another look at some activities going on at public libraries around the Alamo City. There will be a family Pokemon party happening at Cody Branch Library from 2 to 4 p.m. And then from 3 to 4 of a Tobin Branch Library, kids 5 and older can practice reading aloud to a therapy dog, which we just adore. Aww. We're looking at all the events scheduled for today at different public libraries around San Antonio. Just head to the KSAT Kids section of our website at ksat.com. We'll be back. And welcome back, it's 942. So VIA says it is listening to neighbors' concerns about redeveloping the SCOBY complex. So this is a property near downtown that VIA owns and it wants to turn it into a mixed use space with some affordable housing. Now, one neighbor told Kesa that she is concerned that housing may not be considered affordable for that area. Via says it's working with development firm Dream On to redevelop the space. However, it would not serve as a landlord. Now, in a statement shared with Kesa, Via says in part, quote, while our development partner continues to do its due diligence before returning to Via with a proposed binding development agreement, we will continue to listen to the community and work to address concerns as they arise. As we continue to push through this summer heat wave, health officials say you need to act very quickly. If you see someone suffering from a heat related illness, in some cases that could even mean CPR. However, data from the American Heart Association shows that not all people who need the life saving procedure are actually getting it. Black and Hispanic Americans are 26% less likely to receive CPR by a bystander. One CPR instructor says this statistic can change with education and accessibility. The group that's more trained, that's more likely to take a class, then part of your responsibility as a CPR provider is to try and get that word out. Now, how much these classes cost? It's also a barrier to some families. We have a list of ways you can get CPR training without breaking the bank on ksat.com. Well, with these hot temperatures every day now, the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council is stressing the dangers of leaving your kids in hot cars. Texas had the most heat related dust in the country last year. So the council says visual reminders like toys and a car seats help parents remember that they have a child in the car. And if you do see a child in danger or suffering from a heat stroke, they say you're protected by law to help them if you need to break a window. 
anything that we can remind parents or caregivers to look in the back seat. Don't be in that big a rush because, again, if you lose a child, it's going to devastate your family forever. Now, the chief says after four minutes of no oxygen, that the brain starts shutting down. So you need to act quickly when saving someone's life. Hot temperatures affecting just about everybody. If you've never heard the term sploot or spluting before, uh, it is the slang for an animal, especially a dog, cat, or other four-legged pets. Uh, when they lie on their stomach <laughs> with hind legs stretched out, back, and flat to try to cool out. That's right. We've seen a lot of squirrels in our area doing this. It's true. I never heard of the term until I, I got a dog, um, and then I heard about it. Uh, but yeah, the squirrels apparently like to sploot. Wait a minute, is this squirrel splooting, but also holding on to a nut in its mouth? Also eating its nut, <laughs> yes. Multitasking. Multitasking yes. squirrel. Wow. It's good work. Very talented. It's good work. Uh, well done. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> we've got a lot of squirrel pictures, and I didn't even know that uh, we were getting pictures of splooting, but apparently the, the our web team had asked folks to send in pictures of animals keeping okay. cool. Ah. Next thing I know... We've got a Here lot go. of yeah. I, I love these pics. Splooting with a snack. They're great. Keep them coming. We love it. Uh, we got to find ways to stay cool. And you know what? Up across the north, they're really dealing with a lot of smoke. It's been a big, big issue up there. Air quality has been bad today. As we fast forward to 5 o'clock, there's still going to be a lot of smoke. Now, this is all coming down from those Canadian wildfires. We talked about this before, uh, but it has been really bad this year. Worst it's ever been, and the smoke has been funneling down into parts of Michigan today. It'll move into Ohio, uh, parts of the Northeast. So there will be some big time air quality issues up there. Uh, this should dissipate some as we get into tomorrow, although it moves up into parts of New England and Maine, where they're going to get some bad air quality coming up tomorrow. We don't have to deal with this. That smoke is not making it down here. Uh, so our, 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 our air quality, if I can say that, uh, is uh, is okay. Uh, we just have that big ridge of high pressure that is sitting off to our east and it's starting to move away. It's starting to weaken some, starting to move away, and uh, that's helping with our temperatures. Uh, around 100 here today in San Antonio, 102 Abilene, 103 in Dallas. So it's still hot, right? But the, the hotter temperatures are going to be uh, to our east, Shreveport, Little Rock, Jackson. All these places will be seeing triple digits on top of some very very thick humidity. So the heat index values will be pretty rough there for us. Uh, we're forecasting around 100 around 5 o'clock today, 99 King of Lake, 99 in Kerbo. There will be some places today that stay below 100, which is uh, great to see. Still places like Creso Springs, though, may get up above 105 this afternoon. As we go outside for you, uh, partly cloudy skies, 82 at the airport, 82 at Stinson, 81 at Kelly and Randolph. We've got southerly winds right now and some morning clouds. Uh, these shouldn't last all that long. The sun's still shining through, but we'll see partly cloudy conditions for another couple of hours, 80 in Kerrville, 79 Hondo, 81 out in Del Rio. And by the way, Del Rio tied a record again yesterday. So 11 days in a row of record setting heat. I don't think they do it today. This should stay below the record as that heat high moves away. So finally an end to just some wild numbers out there in Del Rio. 81 Canyon Lake, 82 right now in New Braunfels. And there you see the dew points in the low to mid 70s. So the air is still pretty thick right now. The dew points do come down like yesterday in the afternoon. So the feels like number doesn't get too out of control. I think around 100 is our air temperature at 5 o'clock, but it'll feel like 101. We lose the heat index by 8, 9 o'clock as temperatures <laughs> fall, and we still get a good southeasterly wind. So what lies ahead? Our high pressures, so uh, we said, weaken some. It continues to move even further east. Uh, so that kind of opens the door a little bit for us here in Texas. As far as rain chances go, they probably don't kick in until late on Sunday. And even then, that's a very, very small chance. A little better chance on Monday and Tuesday. Right now, 20% chance. And it's just going to be some pop-up isolated stuff. Not widespread. Uh, but if we can get just even a little bit of rain around here, uh, that would be good. And at least it helps temperature some, too. Uh, that brings us back down into the mid-90s for July 4th for Independence Day, not as hot and maybe a shower or a storm. If you're worried about your outdoor plans, I think you'll be just fine. Anything we see should be uh, isolated, and I think uh, most everybody will be uh, able to celebrate just fine. That's great. We'll take yeah. not as hot. That's good news here. That's it. about as good as we're going to get right now anyway. <laughs> Thank you, Justin. Yeah.
Just about 10 till 83 degrees. And coming up, 2023 LSU basketball champion Alexis Morris is San Antonio holding a camp, which she hopes kids are able to learn from her. That's coming up after the break. Former LSU guard and 2023 national champ Alexis Morris held a basketball skills camp yesterday at St. George Maronite Gym. She calls it the camp with the champ tour. Morris drafted in the second round by the Connecticut Sun in the 2023 WNBA draft, but was waived during training camp. And she hopes the kids learn a lot from her camp. They need to walk out of here with something that they learned from camp, basketball related. Um, teamwork, learning about teamwork, how to work hard, how to communicate effectively. Um, you can't play basketball without talking. You can't do anything in life without communicating. So we're going to try to teach them life skills, but in a bas for basketball. So like I said, just keep it fun, but also just teaching them life. You know, my experiences, I have so much wisdom to share with these kids. And you'll see. you hear about it. Morris played for legendary head coach Kim Mulkey for years and says Mulkey's lessons still resonate with her. Very cool. And the 4th of July is quickly approaching and fireworks sales in Bear County have officially begun. This year there will not be any restrictions on sales or use of fireworks since there is no burn ban in place. Bear County Fire Marshal personnel say despite the heat, the drought index is too low to restrict or prohibit the sale and use of fireworks in the county. A few reminders, it's illegal to shoot fireworks near a hospital, school or church, and out of your car in case you were wondering. Also, the sale and use of fireworks is illegal within the city of San Antonio city limits. And fire marshals also want you to know the proper way to safely dispose of fireworks. They say to soak the used fireworks in a bucket for at least 15 minutes and drain the excess water on gravel or grass. After that, wrap the soaked fireworks in a plastic bag so they do not dry out. And last, go ahead and place that bag in your trash bin. Fireworks cannot be recycled or composted. County also offering a few safety reminders when shooting fireworks. Do not use them if it's really windy. Keep a bucket of water or a hose nearby. Never leave children attended when shooting fireworks ever. Never relight a firework that does not, not light properly on the first attempt. And never throw or point fireworks at other people. And looking out there with our trans gay guide camera at Loop 410 at McCullough, looks like there's a stall, y'all, but it's not affecting any traffic right now at this moment. Uh, that's 410 westbound, we decided, out not too far from San Antonio International Airport. And a mix of clouds and sun right now. We're still getting plenty of sun through, though, to get those temperatures uh, to really jump up. We'll, we'll be up around 100 again today. Uh, but these numbers are improving. They really are today and tomorrow uh, right around 100. But by Saturday, I think we're below that that mark. And by Sunday, we could even see a shower or two start to pop up. It'll be isolated few and far between, but it, uh, at least we'll get to use the radar. Uh, and as we get into Monday, Tuesday, maybe a little bit better chance of some isolated afternoon activity as our heat high finally moves away and our temperatures come down to more average levels. What's interesting is I've been wondering all week if we were going to have a fireworks ban or a burn ban or mm -hmm. or both going into next week. And we just answered both those questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it looks good. I guess it, it helps also that we may have a tiny chance. Well, it's green. it's still dry, so we got to right. be careful. Right. But uh, yes, at least yeah. it helps a little. Yeah. Have a good Thursday.